Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Welcome to my tutorial on how to create fire using After Effects and Flash. If you haven't watched my introduction to the wave warp effect in After Effects, do check that out first before proceeding with this lesson, otherwise it's not going to make sense. Let's just take a look at what the final product looks like. It's fire represented by three colours. You've got yellow, orange and red. I created the template in After Effects and then I traced over it using Flash. If you ever watched any anime with fire in it or any cartoons, they tend to use these three colours just to depict fire quite simply with a bit of a glow on it. I referenced Calcifer in Howl's Moving Castle when I was doing this fire just to kind of see how Miyazaki had done it. Uh, I think that's a really good example. So let's take a look at how I created in After Effects. What I've got is three different teardrop shapes on three different shape layers. I've got a red one, I've got a orange one and a yellow one. And they're all different sizes, kind of like Russian dolls folding into each other. The yellow one being the smallest. So let's take a look at what effects I've used to create this kind of fire. Okay, so we've got two wave warp effects. Let's take a look at this one. It's a sawtooth, so it's got very sharp kind of triangular waves. The height is 10 and the width is 94. We've got the direction of minus 24. So that's just what I chose, because I thought it looked the best. Uh, the wave speed is pretty slow. It's 0.5. So it's traveling to the left, because it's in a positive value. The pinning is the bottom edge, because I thought that's what looked best. The phase is minus 180. So I've pushed this animation sort of forward in time, so that it is offset from the rest. And I've also got this posterized time where the frame rate is 12 frames a second. So that's about half what it would normally be in full frame rate video. And underneath this sawtooth, I've got smooth noise. So when I combine the two, I get this interesting effect. I'm going to turn the sawtooth off and we can just look at this smooth noise and see what that looks like. You can see. Like in the other examples uh, of water, in my water tutorials, because this nice, smooth, free-flowing wave that moves through our red shape. But I've added the sawtooth just to give a kind of regular pattern to what would otherwise be essentially a kind of completely random shape. It'd be very difficult to make it loop. And I've done exactly the same for the orange layer. If I turn on the sawtooth, you can see it there. Then I'll turn on the smooth noise. And you can see that the wave speed is 0.5 in both of these wave warps as well. It's really important to keep the wave speed the same on all of the different layers and all of the different instances of wave warp. Otherwise you'll find your waves go out of sync and they don't look right. And again, we've got this posterized time. Same for the yellow layer. So if I turn on Sawtooth, you can see it there. And also I'll turn on the smooth noise. So we've now got a much more interesting looking fire. It's moving quite slowly because fire generally does. The next thing that you'd have to do is try and find where the loop is. So we need to find where this shape or a shape similar to it crops up again. So I've decided it's somewhere around here. So that's six frames after one second, one second and six frames. Thing with using smooth noises, you don't tend to get exact loops, but with something as chaotic as fire, that's okay. Fire changes so fast that you're not necessarily gonna notice that it doesn't loop absolutely perfectly. So there we go, it's smooth enough from here to here. And that actually works really nicely in flash. You can see because of posterized time, frame rate is smooth enough to kind of capture that action but it's still got that nice limited quality to it. So 
what I did next is I exported the composition by adding it to the media encoder queue if you're in After Effects CC or if you're using CS6 uh, and versions before that you want to add it to the render queue. I exported it as a PNG sequence at 25 frames a second and then I imported that into Flash we can see that here. So let's just turn off the drawing layers and just take a look at the original. So what I did is I kept the original with all the bitmaps in it, but then I made a copy of it in this trace layer and I traced all of the bitmaps to give me the basic shape. And then I added these kind of little flicks, extra little bits of detail around the edges. If I turn it into outline mode, you can see that these purple lines kind of sit outside what was there in the template. And I've made them point upwards because that's what flames tend to do. They go for the oxygen and tend to go upward. But I've just made them look more sort of tapered and flame-like. Uh, you can see here I've added a nice big taper there. And that's what I've done throughout the entire animation. I've just tidied it up and made it look more interesting and gotten rid of these very sharp corners that we had because uh, Wave Warp is a bitmap effect. And there we go. The last thing that I did was that I made each frame in this trace layer into a movie clip. And on that movie clip, I applied a glow. So let's take a look in properties and you can see that I've got this glow. Uh, it's got 58 pixels of blur, strength of 100%. It's got a red color to it and the quality is set to high. So each one of these keyframes is actually a movie clip symbol with that glow effect applied to it that just makes it seem a bit more fiery and a bit more diffuse around the edges. If you don't have that effect, it looks a little bit too crisp and less convincing. You could add separate glows to the yellow and orange bits if you wanted, but I just made it all one symbol together. So there we go. That's how to create fire using the wave warp effect in After Effects as a template and then drawing over it in Flash. Have a go yourself and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hextuba Colouring and Activity Book and the Hextuba Anti-Revision Book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike and are well worth checking out.